Thank you for watching and listening to the wife versus the expert. I am the expert. This is the wife. Um, we appreciate your time. Appreciate your energy. Please make sure that you share the feed. Tell a friend about the wife versus the expert. And in case you can't watch the whole video, download the podcast, wherever podcasts are found, Apple, Google, uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to them, the wife versus the expert is there. Um, and you can send us an email, find us on Twitter. She's at Denisha Danielle. I'm at George Reister. I actually use our last name, but anyways, um, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. We have a bunch of good topics up for you guys. Obviously, as you can judge by me, it is Corona time. It is Corona time. She looks all glammed up. That's one of her little projects. She's figured out how to do her little makeup and all this stuff from, from home hair did I me. Mean, how the hell am I supposed to get a haircut? YouTube. You can at least. I try. don't have the tools. Do you know how then, long? Then Amazon it. Like, what's the problem? Do you know how long it takes to like? Okay, so as as a black man, you can't just let anybody cut your hair first and then, foremost. Then you should do it yourself. If it were that easy, everybody would do it. That's why you hire professionals no, but you to know do why? it. That's why that's part of the gift of the quarantine time. Like honestly, I usually do very very little makeup but you know what i was like why don't i try some makeup tutorials i can do my own makeup just like 90 percent of all women so if you can if you can follow a, a recipe you can follow they, it's YouTube. not that easy They're trying try to learn how to even fade tried. fade your own but you hair you haven't even tried first of all first of all your hair is barely cut 90% of the time. That's a lie. Anyway. That's a lie. Anybody see anyway. my videos? No, I'm I'm trimmed up and And, and that's a, I would cat. I would be able to point to exhibit A through Z as that not being true. Anyway, all I'm saying is at least try. Like at least try. So hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. To cut your like put No, I'm not together. trying to cut my my hair. I will get dressed. I will do whatever. But but cutting my own hair is Why? not an option. Beard, yes, I I can handle that. What are you gonna have? You're gonna have a big old seventies fro at the end of this. That's what your plan is. I, I, uh, until like it's safe for somebody to come in our house. You're just gonna yes. keep looking like this. How? What other options do I have? I mean, if anybody knows of any other options, your dad let me... cuts his own hair. He's he wears a baldy. Most guys who wear a baldy cut their own hair and Maybe then they shave it. Maybe wear a baldy. It. Maybe wear a baldy. I'm not going baldy. Try it. No. Try. Mm -mm. Do something. Anything. Please. <laughs> this is the first day she did her, her, her makeup in a month and a half. And she going to have nerve to try to say something to me. At least I did something. What are you trying to say? I'm just saying I did something with myself. And you finally do something on a day where we're recording. And I actually change my clothes. I you don't just you just get up in the morning out here just quarantine style. You got to put yourself together. They say that. Do you see what you have on right now? It's not what I wore to bed. Oh my gosh, she, it's not she, what I she's got on a t-shirt, and if you guys can see some some hoochie, I know, look. some some hoochie booty shorts, old lady <laughs> my sandals, house, my house shoes. old lady sandals with with uh, but I got lashes on <laughs> with warm weather socks. Get out of here. Um, so what are the three most productive things that you have done during quarantine? Organizing, lots of organizing. I do my part of the organizing. I'll just save that. I'll save that for say it with your chest. So I have been doing a lot of organizing. I have been getting some some business projects that have been I, I had been putting off um, together. I've transitioned my management. Um, I've been applying for all of these uh, COVID-19 grants and loans. So hopefully that goes well. Um, I did a makeup tutorial today. Um, I've been spending lots of quality time with Roman and my husband. 
Um, <laughs> you, you see the second. And the rest of our kids. <laughs> you see Devin, the rest of the kids. Don't even, me, don't even matter. All you care about is, all you care about is the little munchkin. He's so cute. Um, but, you know, I'm, tr- I'm trying to find ways to, like, I've, I have no nails anymore. So I'm trying to find ways to stay in shape, all of that good stuff. So. See, I, I like it because I like the natural beauty of you. So I've been trying to tell him, like, you don't need all that stuff. Like, like I know, granted. And I'm over here trying to tell you, you need some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Please, some of it. Yes. So, so she's been doing her uh, her organizing and what? So you say organizing what else? Organizing work, um, Roman. Oh Lord, see this? All you care about. Um, so for so for me, uh, things I've been doing, teaching myself how to play the piano. I have been. Um, That's true. Uh, I started reading a book on how to teach Roman math because apparently it's easier to teach. And I'm teaching him how to read. And I'm teaching him how to read too because I'm using your big ass flashcards that you uh, made. Um, And also uh, learned how to broadcast from home so I can broadcast on national radio and all that stuff from home. But Denicha mentioned something good. Um, if you are looking for information on COVID as it relates to your business, uh, as it relates to your rent, your mortgage, whatever, follow her YouTube at um, YouTube. Actually, go to my blog okay. for the landlord stuff because my blog, I've been sending out daily updates because everything changes every single day. Um just like today. They have new stuff for landlords. So I would go to hostonassociates.com blog. That's where it is. Slash blog, right? Slash blog. Okay. Come on. You got to get a people the right address. We'll put that at the bottom. You think uh, somebody's really going to type hostonassociates.com blog? Or are they going to understand that there's a slash there? You never know. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, yeah. So yeah. So look at her blog, YouTube, whatever for all those needs. So for me, those are the things I've been doing, learning how to broadcast from home, uh, learning the piano and, uh, teaching Roman math. Um, I wanted to talk about something about bedtimes when it, not the kid bed, bedtimes. We talk about adult bedtimes because niche likes to go to bed. She likes to go to go to bed about 10 30 but like she'll be up on her phone scrolling and texting until like 12 30 until she falls and falls true. asleep what that's not true so but do you guys go to sleep together do you go to sleep separately i mean assuming that you know one person is not working a night shift and another person day like because i think that you should go to bed couples should go to bed generally around the same time for the most part but Sometimes you then need, why don't you? Sometimes you need some time to yourself, oh or you got God. some other stuff to do. What? And then, and then the next morning, I'm so tired. Oh my God, I was up all night. I'm so tired this morning. Uh, because you didn't go to bed. Yo, this thing is throwing off your. That's why the corona Take throw your off your butt sleep to bed. And you won't have that problem. You get up, still- I get up at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, popping. I am ready to go. He's over here lagging. Oh, it's so tired. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. I was up. I've been up since five. This morning. When did you get up? This morning. When, yeah. Most I got up mornings. at eight this morning. Uh, exactly. Dragging. How exactly. dare you? How dare you? Because there are times where I'm up and you're laying when? in bed. When? When? No. When? Get out of here. Please. So I do think that you guys should go. Well, we try to go to bed around the same time. At the same time, I'll be like, babe, can we go get in, get in the bed? Sometimes she's like, babe, can we go get in the bed? Try to get in the bed. What? <laughs> Is that not true? <laughs> well, I don't know what you do because you fall asleep on the couch. That's your M.O. The couch is comfortable. Ugh, I cannot. I cannot. Like once it's like 10 o'clock, I want to be in my bed. I do not want to be on the couch watching George sleep. No, I want to be on the couch until it's time to go to sleep. And then I want to get no, in the bed and go to sleep. No, he wants to go to sleep, sleep on Mm-mm. the couch. Nope. No, no, no. I would rather get up and then just go 
on in the bed and go right to sleep. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Um, another thing that, oh, so I, <laughs> are we actually, I was thinking of, about this because she made a comment. She was like, oh, we're saving so much money, not being out, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we are saving money on gas, saving money on eating out. But are we really truly saving money at this point? Because uh, we might as well put in a, a Amazon DSP delivery service partner right across the street from our house because there are, can't be very many houses that get more packages than we get. I mean, we've ordered upgrades to our Wi-Fi. We have ordered, uh, I mean, every single DIY project. She's ordered poster boards, markers, paint, uh, smocks that haven't been used. All of that's cheaper, though. I'll tell you why. Because, like, I ordered the uh, smocks and the paint and all that stuff because I like to do uh, paint and sips. But if you, now they have paint and sips for, like, half price. So if you have the stuff at your house, you can do paint and sips at home, which is much less expensive. Things like um, getting my nails done, dry bar, um, bikini waxes, <laughs> all of that stuff. That's a lot of money. Like a lot of money, and you and and how much money you spend at the barber is is just crazy. What are you talking about? You do. You spend a lot of money when you go. Cost me thirty three dollars okay. to get a haircut. I bet you people on here are like, who pays thirty three dollars for that? I'm telling you. Haircut and beard. Nobody's saying that. Okay. And then how much about the kids? The uh, kids are twenty two dollars. They don't got no beards. Exactly. So it's eleven dollars less. Yes. So anyway, that's seventy some odd dollars every two weeks, right? Okay. How much do you spend on dry bar every time you go? Forty nine dollars. Exactly. Plus tip. And you go ugh, once a week. No, not usually. Maybe once every other week. But regardless, so there's that. There's a lot of money you spend at the grocery store, like just running to go get little groceries here and there. We're not doing that. We're using... Well, because we bought them all at once. <laughs> yeah. So that's the point. So I think you are spending less money um, to, because you're not going to the grocery store and getting your little impulse buys, but you know. Well, what do you think about people who... Because there are a lot of people who will say that we should be supporting local businesses at this point in time and trying to eat out and eat takeout more to help the restaurant industry. I believe that we have fully supported, like beyond supported. We have done, we eat more takeout than we absolutely should. So I am happy that we are not eating takeout, period. And we do eat occasionally. I would say every other week we have some takeout food, but that is, honestly, I, I would rather live like that. I would rather not be eating takeout five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a week. I would rather not. There's only seven days, Denise. Are there multiple meals in a day, George? Uh, ask, ask Do you it. eat out multiple ask days ask in a day? Ask yourself that. Ask yourself that. This one Miss, I'm talking, you guys, Miss if Post, you haven't been able to Miss, notice, <laughs> Miss Post, George is already on my nerves when this whole thing started, but this is the point. Like, he, the whole point is that we are saving money. For sure we're saving money. Everybody's saving money. Just being out in the world and stopping and getting this or um, going to the movies. That I like going to the movies. You, you you can't take that away from my my nine dollar. Well, the virus movie. did. The virus <laughs> took it away. I ain't. I'm not trying to take away anything. But my point is, is that you're absolutely saving money. One hundred percent. We're about to get a refund on car insurance premiums. A lot big time there. We were able to go down. From a multiple car to one car. So I don't know what, what, what the question is. Of course we're saving money. I was wondering if everybody else was saving saving money because I know that you are being For sure. prudent and frugal and For sure they are. For sure they are. Um Okay. Okay. Okay, so here's something that has caused a divide in our house. <laughs> And it is frustrating to me because I have a thing about honey and syrup in particular. I like if you go to and it kind of all started when one time I went to KFC 
this is probably like, I have no idea how long probably 10 years ago and on the packet it said honey sauce and I was like honey sauce like, this is weird like let me look and read it had like 20 ingredients for honey and they can't call it honey because it's it's a sauce it's not actual honey and then the same thing with syrup. I had real maple syrup and I was like, this is amazing. Like, why would I ever eat nasty ass Miss Buttersworth or Aunt Jemima's? Like, and um, and I buy real good quality maple syrup. And my wife over here buys for the family Aunt Jemima's or Miss Buttersworth. I told the kids, we're not using it, right? And then this one come, comes in and I made pancakes. I make fantastic pancakes and I make some fantastic pancakes. Kids are eating. Everybody's eating real maple syrup. She comes in. Oh, and then pulls out this, this junk food trash and then pours it on. And the kids are like, how come we can't, we can't have it. And she tries to convince me to let the kids have this and I don't like it. I'm not with it. She's lucky this stuff is not in the trash. And then the crazy part is if I bought something like that, there have been times where she's thrown stuff in the trash that I bought, but this nasty ass syrup she wants to keep. You bought a case of potato chips, a case, a whole case of potato chips. That After, no, no, no. You had your little ramble. Uh, after what I, kind of potato chips? I just said, if I can, I talk. Go ahead. So he has. I just want you to give the details. Look at how you are. Like this is how you are. Somebody help, help me. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet. Go ahead. So George likes junk food. No, what? He also likes dessert. You like cookies. You like chips. You like chocolates. You like gum, you like juice, all of those things. No, actually, pretty much the only drink I drink is water, pretty much. Well, then why do we have so much juice in the house? Uh, I make smoothies. Anyway, that's not what you get. You, y'all be drinking the juice. Who, is, who the hell is y'all? Who is you people? Not me. I'm everybody but me. I don't drink any of the juice. So what? Uh, what? Because you're drinking coffee and wine. Coffee, water, and wine. What else do you need? Okay? That's my thing. So, George has all of these junk foods. I go through this with him all of the time. All of the... Yes. When are, when are there ever cookies around here? Uh, not for long, because every time you buy cookies, they all get eaten. <sighs> so, my point is this. He just bought a case of... A case of potato chips. A small... Of small bags of potato a, a chips. A case! And they weren't just potato chips. I get, like, good quality chips. Like Stop saying that! Kettle, is there, there's no... There's no to a potato chip it's a potato if you chip. get kettle chips oh stop some Anyways, nice miss vicky's chips it's, there's no nutritional value there zero so you you could say whatever you want about it he he wants this stuff but he has this big thing about syrup you know oh i can't do the syrup it has to be real syrup and i'm like this is two to three tablespoons of Jemima's. I don't like the taste of his real maple syrup. So I'm going to get what I like to have. And if that's my little sugary treat, because guess what? Your little sugary they, treat is your coffee. Because if you don't have your coffee, you get sick. I have. What is that? That's not a sugary treat. It's not because it's sugar. It's yes, because of the caffeine. Sugar, caffeine, it's whatever. Caffeine. It's addictive. Even, how dare you? It's you addictive. Are the, you are a sugar fiend. No. You're, yes. you're, you're the one who's addicted to, to something that if you don't get it, then you get sick. Okay. You get like dope sick off of coffee. I don't get dope sick. It's the same thing. Slight exaggeration, Mr. Reister. It's not dope sick. It's just I get a headache, which anybody who drinks coffee every day does. And by the way, I drink one cup of coffee. One. Just one stinking cup of coffee. If and love if, taste, if anybody else out there if is you a like mom... It and she doesn't drink coffee, get out of here. You are a, a saint. It just doesn't exist. Yes, There's it does. Too much they drink to tea. They, dad they like. Dad's in the bed laying out. I stand up on that. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Maybe you should get up and have a cup of coffee. Maybe uh, that'll help you. Oh, because one of us gets up in the middle of the night with the baby. But one mm, of us? 
Are you serious? Hmm. Hmm. Any, anyway, hmm. so my point is this. He makes a big Get deal into over it. this maple syrup. Get into it. <laughs> you sound crazy. I, he makes a big deal over this maple syrup. And I'm like, uh, Aunt Jemima is a, a slight indulgence. Yes, it's high fructose corn syrup, but I'm not tasting that nasty maple syrup. And if y'all have dessert every night, I can have two to three tablespoons of Aunt Jemima's but you want to maybe, give it to the kids too. Maybe once or twice a week. No, I'm just not a hypocrite. I'm not going to sit here and be like, have a milkshake, but don't you have that in Jemima? Like that sounds crazy. You sound crazy. So to me, I'm like moderation. It's once or twice a week. Maybe like seriously, I don't even have syrup every week. Get so here, that's all it is. Get your life, bro. Get your life. I just can't for the life of me understand why anybody wants to eat that BS. Like it's awful. It leaves an aftertaste in your mouth. It's and all And you sit there thicket. and chew gum all the time. That has no nutritional value. That's it's not, it's to sugar. get, you're supposed to chew gum after you eat to get stuff out of your teeth. No, no, you're not. Yes, you are. Can Flo a dentist please tell him that they you're not? Floss? Uh, I believe they tell you to floss. Yes, floss yeah. and gum. Nobody Those told you to get, get gum. Yes, it does. Floss your you teeth. You don't know nothing. You that, know nothing, I'm going to show you John all Snow. the negative stuff about gum. And, and besides the fact that you pop your gum. <laughs> I'm, we're, we're, we're under quarantine, y'all. This is what's going on. So any, anyways, we, we watch a lot of television shows together and we're going to have to start talking about insecure on every episode. If somebody would watch the episodes on time. Um, but what is going to happen is, is that, so we want to talk about, cause we binge watch a lot of things. I know you guys do too. It'd be fun to do it together. So we're going to talk about the movie marriage story. The reason why I want to talk about this movie is because there are times that I would imagine that it happens to you where movies get in the movies, TV shows interrupt your relationship because like when me and Denisha first got together, we would watch, uh, the, the, the parenthood. Then we watch, this is us. And you know, we watch the profit. All of those first two shows were fine. Everything was fine. And then some personal stuff happened in Denise's life. And then she can't watch the, the prophet with Marcus Lemonis. <laughs> she don't, she don't want to watch. It's bothersome to her for a particular reason. She, she, she likes Marcus, all that stuff. It was just some other stuff that happened and um, that had nothing to do with him, had nothing to do with the actual I show. Did, I did a pilot with CNBC. Okay. So I didn't want And it was like my, my own show. So it was really cool. But I didn't really vibe on all of it. And so I don't think it was a true representation of me. It didn't get picked up. And so I really wasn't feeling like tuning into CNBC shows. That's it. That is it. But you loved his show. I still do. I just wasn't feeling it. For so two years. So so like I, I gotta wait I till wanna do. So I, I gotta don't wait. Have to feel nothing. So you I gotta can watch your own shows. You watch all them terrible shows on so your I own. So I gotta time. wait till you know, till you go to sleep or you're not around or whatever to watch an episode of The Prophet. No, like, come you on. can do whatever you want to do. Um, so, and Marriage Story is one that recently... Uh, you got all triggered. So she wanted to watch the movie. And and mind you, I'm a movie buff. I try I to watch as many... I had already seen it. Yeah. I try to watch as many movies as possible. Especially Academy Award nominated ones. But, you know, if you're a movie buff, you should probably see those. I... As we get the screeners, I've seen m most of them. Um, and Marriage Story in particular, I couldn't watch it. Like halfway through the movie, I turned it off. And my, this never happens to me. Like she's normally like, like trigger person when it comes to stuff on television, regardless of whether it's stuff that's happened in our relationship, her past, whatever. Like she's the trigger man. And me, I just, you know, roll with the punches. But Marriage Story, this was off. I could not watch this damn movie. So you have, who's in it? Adam Driver and Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. Johansson. And there, and it's Charlie and, let me see. Uh, Charlie and Nicole are the central figures of the movie. And I'm sitting here like, 
I'm watching, so they're getting a divorce and I'm watching all the stuff that Charlie went through and it just triggers me to stuff that I went through, even though I wasn't married, like that I went through with, with my kids and all of this stuff. And it was just triggering to the point where I could not watch the movie. And it was that. And the fact that I was watching and I was like, this divorce is so avoidable because I hate to see families broken up. And this was so avoidable. I was like, I'm sitting here like a black person in the movie theater yelling at the TV like, no, don't do it. Don't say that. Don't do that. No, just go to LA, like do something. And it was just so heartbreaking to me to watch it. And that was probably either the first time or one of the first times ever in my life that I could understand where she was coming from in terms of <laughs> being true. It probably is one of the first times in your life that you could understand where I was coming from. That was a true statement. About why she was triggered about something. And like, I can't watch it. I can't watch it. I mean, I literally had a physical reaction watching this movie. And I just didn't know how to deal with that. And the fact that you have helped me evolve into this, into this like, uh, emotionally aware person. There are times where I enjoy it when it comes to relationships with the kids and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But times like, like that, I'm like, I need to go back to the cold hearted man who would never be affected by this. Okay. You might want to explore why you were so triggered. I just said why I was so triggered. No, but why, what was at the core of it? Cause I don't want to see marriages broken up and, and but why is it triggering okay. you? Okay, here here it is. Because there have been some times where we've gotten arguments, fights or something. Mm -hmm. And I look at, um, and then and we go to marriage counseling when, even when stuff's good. That way, we just, just maintenance. Highly recommend, by the way. Yeah. And it's one of those things that you're like, okay, this stuff is avoidable. Like, I see where we have triggered each other or done things that have not been necessarily positive Right, but why was that triggering so much to you? Like, what was it making you feel? Angry, hurt, uh, sad? I wanna, angry, all of the above. But what about it? Like, what about it? The fact that this man just wants to be a good father. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to get a divorce from his wife. His wife's getting terrible advice from the lawyer. Mm-hmm. And like, she is just throwing gasoline on the fire to like break up this family because of her own personal agenda. What would, what do you think her agenda was? To have, to have her be a miserable person just like she is. Oh, you think that the attorney's agenda was to make her miserable? Yeah. Like, like, like she got her to do things way more aggressively toward him that weren't even necessary. Like they could have gotten a divorce with the mediator like they wanted to, if they really wanted to get a divorce. Right. So what do you think the wife's goal was? I think her goal was just to get some power and, and, and have her own life. And why? Because she hadn't had that throughout, throughout their relationship. So I understand wanting that, mm -hmm. but the fact that this lawyer came in and made the situation a hundred times worse is so what you were really triggered by the lawyer by the escalation of the problem, which divide, which hurt the kid and hurt the dad because he didn't want it. He would have done things to try to fix it. Mm -hmm. I guess what? He wasn't willing. To, he wasn't willing to relocate to L.A. at all. I'm, I'm saying to during the marriage or after the divorce. I'm saying to try to fix their divorce situ situation and try to do it amicably. Hmm. Interesting. I, I. It's interesting. I mean, to me, I when I saw the movie, I saw a wife who was sick of his shit. Right? Like seriously sick of it and sick of having this life that she did not want. She, she was like, this was not the life that I envisioned for myself that I thought we were going to have together. And I've been disappointed and let down a lot of times. And now I'm going to, 
I am done with this marriage. It's I do have like some level of love. Like I felt like she did. Um, but it's a, it's a nice arc because the, I had empathy for the wife. I had empathy for the husband, I had empathy for the kid. Um, I wasn't at all mad at the attorney. She's a divorce attorney. She's doing what divorce attorneys do. She's advocating for her client to have her kid. But there was and no, move to LA. Like the, what else but, is she supposed to do? But like that's the other thing is that there wasn't an advocating for her to have her kid. It was the advocating for her the the dad not to. It, it was it had to become. They a were divi- mutually exclusive. Dad was wanting to stay in New York, so if mom wants to go to LA, there is no. We're gonna work this out. You get Tuesday through Friday. No. No, no, no. He would have been willing for the kid to stay out there for a bit. And, That's and then not come, what she no, wanted. No, I'm saying, and then go back in the summers. How old was the kid? He was like 10 or something. Exactly. So the first I'm talking about to go years, back to the summers been... or something. Like, they could have found a resolution. And the divorce attorney was a B.I. That, that wanted, like, she wanted something that the lady didn't even want. And it escalated. The point is, is that you were very triggered by it and you saw it, you know, from the perspective of you having to go fight for your kids and feeling like you had to do unreasonable stuff. Correct. Right? Correct. And the fact that this marriage was ending and it didn't have to. I mean, what do you mean? I'm saying that they both could have made different choices. How? And that and that I see from our counseling stuff where I'm like, listen, you don't have to go down this path that... You're not always going to be, you know, oh, we're so in love, kissy face, all this stuff right now. But that doesn't mean that you should get a divorce. That doesn't mean that your relationship should end. You have to work through these things, evolve individually. Yeah, but sometimes people don't evolve together like they don't. So sometimes but you're I think together that's where a lot of people don't things- fight. I mean, Al, Al always says that two he- that a healthy people can be married to anybody. Correct. Correct. So if people are not healthy, then they can't be married to anybody. And and in those situations, I mean, he cheated on her, like all kind of stuff. Like at some point, somebody's like, listen, I don't have, I ain't got no more, no more room for, for you and the way you're living. And she basically said, I don't want this life anymore. That is a, I think that's why most yeah, women, but it could have been I think that's why most women are the ones who file for divorce. It's like 80% or something like that. Right. Cause guys are like, well, we can, we'll just keep working it out my way. <laughs> we'll just keep doing things. It's the other way. way too. Like, I mean, that's assuming that the woman is right in the situation and that right. she's the victim. It's not as right. Opposed it's to, not wrong. But she's doing things to contribute to the, to the detriment of the marriage too. How? Like, what was she doing? By being closed off or being, I mean, there, there, there's so many things that happen in relationships. Right, but she, she had left her career in LA, moved to New York where she didn't want to be, became and his theater thing, which was his dream. So she was a supporter of his dream. Yeah. And at, she kept saying, I want to do my thing too. He was not receptive to that. So maybe. So there's not a, oh, they didn't have to get divorced. At, at some point, somebody's going to say, yeah, but, I'm not going to do yeah, this but forever. Sometimes you have to speak up. Sometimes you have to she, go to. She did. No, the, the, sometimes you have to say things in a way that people can can, can hear you because because oh because the the way that you think uh-huh. that somebody should understand or like you're you're like how don't they see this because people paint differently people paint by by numbers differently sometimes I go from one to one one hundred you go from one hundred back back down to one you're still gonna get to the ending solution. Sometimes it's a different way. My point is this. There are divorces. And I thought it was a really good movie to show kind of how two good people and people who were in love, how their relationship can fall apart. And yeah, it's easy to fall up. It's easy to fall apart if you're not doing the work. That's what I'm saying. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing that. All I'm saying is that 
you you have to try to put yourself in everybody's position. That that is where I thought the movie did a pretty good job. I th- still think it was told a lot from the male perspective. Well, it was the guy who wrote it. Correct. Like, so who, it was still from his yeah. perspective, but you could you could see everybody's position and how everybody was affected by the divorce. So I thought it was good. Which sucked. Like there was no winners. I mean, there was zero winners. We just went all the way in on that, that topic. Um, another thing that has divided our house in movies is, um, we have one child who doesn't like to watch movies (laughs) and it's something. And and I remember Denisha telling me when Devin was, uh, who's t- now 20 was younger. She didn't like to watch movies with any violence. Even if people yelled or like, even if it were a cartoon or anything, she's like, no, I don't want to watch. Mm-hmm. And, and the next oldest daughter, she does not like it at all. Like we like watching animal fight night, all of these things don't on animal we. planet. I don't. Well, the boys do exactly. on, <laughs> on animal planet and all these things. And she's not with it at all, which I'm cool with. But I don't understand how she, like, like, can't handle cartoons a lot of times. Uh, yeah. I think sometimes it's like she just is anticipating that it's going to go down a bad path. And she doesn't want that experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, but you, you've always watched, in my opinion inappropriate stuff with the boys at an early age. So they're desensitized. It doesn't bother them. Death and carnage. It's okay. <laughs> She's not okay with it. Neither is Devin. Neither am I. I don't like watching well, that. Well, I don't show them death and carnage. Yeah, like you you're, do. You're All talking about like watching movies? Iron Man or something. Are you serious? Nobody dies in Iron Man. Transformers. Transformers is yeah, sketchy. Yeah. I'm just saying, like video games, all of that stuff. I didn't let them play like Call of Duty and all that stuff. No. Liar. Do what? not lie on here. I'm serious. Do not lie. I just let Damon Plus start playing Call of, Call, Call of Duty again. He was 14. Again. Again. <laughs> because... Again. You just told on yourself. Told on yourself. See over here trying to be like, I don't even let them watch. Well, Call I don't of Duty. I don't let Caden play. Caden is in there when he's No, playing. I don't. No, he's not. He's, yes, he, he is. No, he's not, Denisha. Okay. No, he's not. Okay. Say it, say it again. Boy, say it again. You don't scare me. All right. Shoot. Wait till, wait till we get out, get out this Shoot. camera. You put don't you scare in me. A, I'm trying you. to. Maybe they'll tell you and you'll listen because you don't listen to me. How can I not listen to you? You're I'm the loudest saying, person tell, in tell, the room. I tell it like it is, but you know, you, you got all You're the answers. loudest person in the room. And, but I will say that it is important to be sensitive to your kids' feelings and all these things, which I have, you know, I'm, I'm really good at that now. Um, <laughs> what is the laughing about? I mean, you're better. You're better. No, you're like overly sensitive to it. You're like, like sensitive to the point. So I try to be sensitive to their feelings without letting them make excuses. But Denisha will be like, like, because they know that that's a button that they can push. Like, oh, like I'm, I'm triggered. I'm bothered. Like this was making me feel a certain way. And I'm like, cut the crap, dude. So then, then you're sending a mixed signal because a lot of times you tell them, no, tell me how you feel. I really want to know. Use your words. Use this. You know what's what's going on with you. And then it's cut the crap. I don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. It's only cut the crap when you're trying to use it as an excuse to 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 manipulate like why you didn't do something or why you shouldn't do it because you're like, oh, I felt some kind of way. It was this to trigger me. This and I'm like, come no, on, man. I think like, I stop. I think you buy those excuses more than I buy those what? excuses for sure. For sure. Oh, I'm tired from practice. Like, really? Really? Oh, stop. You still got to wash the dishes. Stop, Denisha. You. you what? What? Oh, my God. I you hope your family comes on here because of... they will They will be like, that's true. That's true. No. No, because they, cause they not here in, in, in this house. But, uh, but now it is time for her favorite. Well, her favorite segment is praising me. <laughs> which which we do after, but it is time for the segment that we call. Come on, one, two, three. Say, Say it with your chest. chest. 
Say it with your chest where we get one minute to get off something that is on our heart and mind and say it. Other person cannot respond, cannot, has to be Are quiet you, and everything. Am I timing up. you? No, you're up first. No, I'm up second. No, you're up first. No, I was up first last time. You're up no, first. You're I up went first. first last time. No, go ahead and go. Go ahead and go. Ready? And put it on one one minute. Okay. Wait, whoa, 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 I wasn't ready yet. Oh my gosh. Ready? No. You need to do you need to organize yourself? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Okay, go. I have the same problem that I had last week a little bit. Um, my wife, who I love dearly, who is amazing, she likes to she gets upset. When people don't listen or aren't paying attention to her because they're on their phone, they're watching TV or doing something else. And she will come in in the middle of them doing it and start talking and be like, I was just talking to you. Why weren't you paying attention? And I'm like, I was doing something before you came in here. You do realize that, right? But then the other way around, she's got nerve to be like, oh, wait, hold on. I'm talking to you. Can you, can, can you put your phone down? Blah, blah, blah. But then on, well, on the other hand, if she's on the phone or if she's doing something, she tries to make every excuse. I was doing something. I'm not paying attention. I, I was on my phone and blah, blah, blah. So she's a hypocrite in this area. And eh. Lame. So freaking whoa, lame. Whoa, whoa. Are you responding? Lame. Are you responding? I uh, no. Okay, exactly. No, because it's Shh. lame. Shh. <laughs> that that's a response. Lame. Can you follow instructions? That's not even true. You can't. That's okay. You can't. Okay. Can you follow the rules? Can you follow the rules? Oh my God. Say that it with Clash of Clans is not I was doing it's saying, something. It's saying Clash of Clans is not I was doing oh my, something. Oh like my, you're not see, look, if you over there per, are like handling some business, then then yes, maybe I'll she wait until made you're done. My point. She can't Clash even, of Clans is not doing something. She can't even follow the instructions. That's on, ridiculous. Say it with your chest so you know what I'm saying is true. Ha! He is on my nerves, y'all. Oh my gosh. Are you on ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, go. If I spend, I don't even need a minute. If I spend the time to organize and I remove things from our house, it is not okay to put them into the garage indefinitely. Our garage space is actually something that I would like to keep organized. So when you let this stuff pile up because you're not doing your part of the organization, which is to get rid of the stuff, I, I organize it, you get rid of it, but your part is not done. And then you've made our other garage a, a gym that has stuff hanging from everywhere and it's messy and it gives me anxiety. I don't like it. I don't need any more time. Good. I'm not going to respond to that <laughs> because I'm not supposed to, because those are the rules. Maybe I'll talk That's about it on the next episode. Made up. No, we both made it up. Oh, stop. This is your whole segment, so you can say what you want to say. Stop. So, all right. So <laughs> now you go first with saying the great things you love about me, which is the I'm next segment. think about that. With the next segment that was created by Cassandra Reiser, who said, it. say it with your chest. No, say it with your chest, something good about your spouse. So I'll say something good about you. You've been out here cooking. You've been out here cooking. Doing you your said thing. that last week. Say something new. Your makeup looks nice. Thank you. The end. I love that about you. <laughs> what? I'm just supposed to say that. I love about you. <laughs> okay, go. Your turn. So, I can't think of anything. <laughs> like a baby, like like a little I kid. Can't. I can't think of anything. I can't. Let me think. Typical. T see, this is why I'm the expert because I can coachable, take advice, listen to these things. That's why she did she's a good the job with the lettuce grow. Getting that to get together. 
The lettuce grows our hydroponic garden. Yeah. Good job. I love that about you. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening to <laughs> The Wife versus The Expert. Always right or never wrong. It's actually wife and the expert, and it's the same person. That's the part that you got to figure out. Like, Happy wife, happy life does not always mean right right wife big i mean the right wife but not that she's always right okay. she may always get to be right but that doesn't mean she's always right well everybody says i'm right but nobody literally everybody. nobody says that. literally uh check the comments they tell you all of the time because they are your the little wife friends is right no those are your friends those are husbands who are watching it with their wives trying who to just make stuff happy at life. Home. husbands who have figured out life my dad gave me great advice before, right before we got married. He said, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? I choose, I choose happy majority of the time. Every now and then you do got to be right. When are you right? Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys for listening to the wife versus the expert. We appreciate your time. Appreciate your energy. Find me at George Reister anywhere, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, wherever at Denisha Danielle. Same thing, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, wherever else. Um, for all of your COVID stuff, make sure you hit her up. Um, she will get back with you. Just don't call the phone line. <laughs> um, uh, you guys can send us an email. Um, if you want, at uh, I'm mad, I-M-M-A-D, at unafraidshow.com. Um, or, yeah, anything like that. Peace out. See you guys next episode.